Hello everyone, <clears throat> welcome to another live stream. My name is Shane Olson, and today we're gonna be sculpting this another character from the amazing concept artist Shafi Ahi. I love, 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 love his designs, and this one just makes me laugh. So welcome, welcome. It's a whole new year, whole new sculpt. Hey Neil, what's going on? Welcome, welcome, here we go. I guess I better select the correct object here. What's going on, Neil? What's new? Anything new? <laughs> 2 a.m. Hello, well, welcome. Thanks for hopping in and joining me today. I appreciate it. From Jamaica. Hello, welcome. Okay, so I always, if you're new here, I always start with a sphere and then I just start pushing things around and, and trying to make it work. So we have this kind of, I'm going to sculpt him in pose and in expression. So I'm not going to start with a um, neutral pose or anything like that. And I typically will sculpt things for 3D printing. And since his neck is so tiny, I might thicken that thing up. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. All right. And let's get, let me get some skin color going. A little too light. Probably too dark. Oh, how is that? How's that hairbrush? more that works okay Zofo how are you it's been a while welcome welcome you know I kind of want to keep his head spherical but pull out the sides see how it kind of gets pulled out to where his ear is a little bit like hey Arnold you know Let's see, I want to kind of see right where the middle is. Hey, what's up, Mark? Welcome, welcome. Happy New Year. I'm trying to figure out a way to get the the box to work? I'm not sure what that is. Okay, I want to get this more dense right off the bat. So what I'm going to do is apply this dynamic subdivision and then delete it. So delete the lower and then it makes it more dense. Then what we can do is just push in that mouth Hey, Lavender. No complaints. I am. Uh, I'm. A, I'll be honest. I'm a little overwhelmed with what's going with what's going on this year. So far, I have like lots of lots of opportunities, and I don't know if you guys saw or not, but I did a video for Reillusion. And uh, I love love character creator and how it's it's kind of opened up a new just a new way of doing things for me and it makes it so you can because I I've played with auto riggers in the past like Mixamo and things like that you know and like blenders rigging and it's it's fast but it's not character creator kind of feels like like that but on steroids like. It's really, really easy to use and fast. And I'm just like, man, this is crazy. Okay, I'm gonna use the same and Z remesh this. Okay. Box of the hair. Oh, right, 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 right. Oh, I see. Yeah, Lavender, if I do anything for to, to teach, character creator, I would probably do it outside of the workshop as a new 
as new training because it's a whole new software and it's a whole, whole different thing. So I probably wouldn't include it in the workshop. If that makes sense. But I do, I do want to teach it for sure because it's it's amazing. Lavender, I haven't heard back from Maxon yet on that. It's you and one other person, and I'm just like, <laughs> I don't know what to do about it. Okay. Let me Z remesh this one more time. Every time I Z remesh, it does get rid of my poly paint. It's still here, but it's not really, I didn't fill it with the color, so it's not really there. Kind of roll this back. Just kind of looking at it from the side where everything is going to kind of live here. There's no chat visible on stream. Oh. Why not? Oh, there it is. Hello. Okay, <laughs> thanks for that. That's weird. Yeah, I'm, I guess we're, now we're streaming to five different places. It used to be three, now it's five. So I don't know all the places where it's streaming to. It looks like, looks like Twitch and YouTube so far, but I'm not sure where else. I had a, I, I'm kind of curious about that. When you watch live streams, um, do, would you rather someone stream just on one platform? Or do you like it on multiple so you can kind of choose where to watch? <laughs> Lavender, right? Yeah, the Twitter message here. I wonder if they fixed it or if we'll be seeing it soon. <laughs> yeah, it's totally true. Okay. I want to make more of a kind of an interior. This mouth is so big. That's why I wanted to work on it first, just so I could get it resolved, figured out. Yeah, joined, joined, joined. Let's see if I can see where else. Looks like... Um, Pixlogic in, in two different YouTube channels. Max on ZBrush. Oh, they set uh, tw Twitter to read only. So people watching over there cannot uh, comment, I guess. So if you're watching from Twitter, hop over onto YouTube or Twitch if you want to say anything. <laughs> or you're welcome to watch. I prefer one platform. Makes it consistent, easier to interact with other viewers. Yeah, that's kind of how I feel. And I, I think... Just for my own personal channel, I think I would stream on YouTube just because it's um, it's searchable after you're done, you know, whereas like Twitch is not. Even though Twitch seems faster and like the technology is, is better, but that said, it's like not searchable. Like when you search Google for someone or something, it, you never pull up their live stream. You know what I mean? You have You kind of have to go either either the person that did it would have to post it somewhere like a link to their live stream you can post from x oh hey there you are neil okay <laughs> it said read only so i was assuming that they couldn't either spineless twitch arguably has more reach while live youtube has better reach when you're done that's interesting why why do you I'm just curious why why uh, Twitch has more reach when you're live. Does it notify? I guess you have to be subscribed though, right? To get like how how would you find streamers? I know there's the when you're live, there's kind of that browse feature that they have, like the page showing all the all the streamers. But I I just don't know how it advertises to people that you're streaming. Dep 
depends on where you have your user base already. But yeah, I, people follow me on Twitch, even though I never really live stream. I think I've live streamed there a couple times on my own channel. Not really. Hey, Tattoon, yep. <laughs> I did a video for them. It's easier to find people in the categories on Twitch. Oh, got you. Yep, you're right. It does have tags. I see a lot of sculptors that work quickly. You model characters with a huge calm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I know of a, I can't remember his name, the blender sculptor. He, he's all about trying to bust out a character in a really short amount of time. I like to keep things clean. And so, so I, I like to take it. I'm not, I don't take it slow, but I don't take it fast either. Like mama bear, I guess just right. <laughs> yeah, speed char. There you go. Yeah, speed care. That guy. I, I love to listen to him. He's funny. Because he talks about himself in the third person. <laughs> Loves accent. He's a he's a good great artist too. Does some good stuff. Okay, so I'm going to split this off, uh, not group split, cancel, unmass points, there we go, where did it go, there we go, and let's color, this object, and then let's give him a tooth color that's like a lighter version of the same color. Hey, what's up, Ian? How are you doing? <clears throat> Twitch will highlight you in the category. Finding a live stream on YouTube is very difficult. Yeah, so I don't, I'm, uh, you're you're totally right. So uh, when when people are live, it feels like um well. It, it's interesting. It's really interesting to kind of try and figure it out, like how it wants you to do it. Because I listened to this guy, his name, he, he goes, his name's Thor. You guys might've heard of him. He goes by uh, Pirate Software. That's the name of his channel. And he was talking about YouTube shorts. And he was saying like, don't notify your followers that you've gone live on, on YouTube shorts. Um, when did I do Krampus part two? Uh, back in December, I think. Anyway, he said, don't notify your subscribers because then YouTube will push it out to people that are not subscribed to your channel and you'll get more views that way. It's really, I don't know. It's all weird to me. Okay, I'm going to delete this and Z remesh it with the same again. Jeff, I think you're right. Yeah, the clip you're referring to is talking about notifying by by email, maybe, and avoiding counting dead account. Yeah, like, it, it's really interesting the way it works, to be honest, but what he was saying made sense to me. Really love to listen to that guy, by the way. It's like an ex-Blizzard programmer slash security guy. <laughs> Purposely block YouTube shorts. Uh, so I, okay, for, I don't do that. And the reason why is because um, that's kind of how I feel. I find new subscribers or sorry, new channels. That's how I found him is because I ran across one of his shorts. And basically he streams for like eight hours at night, like late at night. And so I'm not up. I'm not going to be watching him late at night when he's streaming. Um, I like to watch his long form stuff. So, and again, I found him through his shorts. So, and his shorts were taken from his, his streams. 
like when he says something during his stream, he has, I don't know if it's him or an assistant that basically uh, take, takes something he said and clips it out and posts it as a short. And that's how I found him. So I, I leave him on just for so I can find new streamers. Does not have the restream, but on the Max on Training Team YouTube it does. It's actually posting to both places. Max on Training Team and Max on ZBrush. And you said it's not pushing. It says it says five out of five. Like it's streaming five out of five places. About 123 people watching spread across all platforms. Which is cool. Thanks for joining me today, by the way. Appreciate it. Okay, so I'm going to kind of smooth this out. I switched over to Sculptress Pro just so I can kind of get, get this geometry evened out in here. Let's go a little more power on the smooth brush. I found his shorts on TikTok. See, I don't watch TikTok. <laughs> I don't like the YouTube app and the recent actions, so I won't let them. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't. Hey, what's up, George? Welcome, welcome. Happy New Year, sir. Thanks for stopping by. If you guys don't know who George is, George uh, is like master anatomy blockout guy. And he does some, some absolutely fantastic blockouts. And so if you want to study and learn anatomy, that's a great way to do it. Does stylized anatomy characters. How's your new year, George? Doing good? Need to get the tongue going down his throat. Sometimes I'll actually like physically take the throat and like drag it down, like how it would really work with an esophagus, you know? There you go. So Neil's posted a link to George's blockouts on uh, Twitch. I keep wanting to say Twitter. Okay, let's get a tongue in there. I like this song. Darling Midnight by Shingo Nakamura. It's good. I wish I could play the songs I listen to on my stream, but I cannot because I'll get I'll get dinged. Hey, how's it going, Tatara? Welcome, welcome. Okay, after you get the tongue in there, you can color it. So it's kind of going down the throat now. I'll take a, this color and take it to the red zone. Red. A little bit more like this. There we go. And we might as well, well, it's a little too early to do this, but let's just go ahead and color the inside, the interior of the mouth, a color. Again, we can go red with it this time, but go a little south, make it darker. Let's try that, maybe darker. You can even do two tones like uh, Shafi's done in here, where you go super dark inside of here, which is fun. And then go a little lighter. Like 
this maybe. Sure. Yep, you're welcome. <laughs> Uh, when did you become a 3D artist? How did your 3D life start? 3D? So I, I'm an old person <laughs> by by the tech, technology's standards. Um, I've been at this for 25 years now. And I started back in 1998, 97, 98. And I went to the Art Institute of Seattle when there was, that was I, I was like the second class to go through their character animation program. And I, I started by uh, modeling, modeling uh, objects and characters in 3D Studio Max. Well, it was actually 3D Studio version three on DOS. <laughs> I, I'm that old. And I played with, um, Soft um on the old alias or the old uh, silicon graphics workstations back in the day. Professional since 03. Nice. Welcome, welcome. Back in my day. <laughs> so I totally feel like, like that whenever I talk about my experience. Um, I've worked at six different game studios, including Disney and Sony. Okay. It's your birthday tomorrow. Nice. Happy birthday. Okay. I usually don't take the mouth this detailed right this early, but I really wanted to kind of work that out to kind of get the placement going before I went any further. I don't know why. What's up, Ginger Bear? How are you, sir? Pro since 06, since Maya 8.5, nice. Yeah, I use I use Maya quite a bit. I, I started in 3D Studio Max, but I ended up using Maya a lot. Probably 15 years of my career. I was an animator for Yeah, I kind of figured, <laughs> Jason. How are you doing, my friend? I recognize your nickname. <laughs> Did you have a good new year? studios were using 3d studio max and maya when i was getting started yeah for sure um you know it, it's funny because 3d studio max kind of made a name for itself in the game industry i feel um and then and then they adapted maya as they went and i've only used soft image on one project it was um it was an animation for i can't even remember the game it was for but i was working at glyphics um and we had to do some a, a cinematic for a game that was to be released by so we we were working i can't even remember the name of the producers um i was working on advent rising but advent rising the the publisher also had another studio elsewhere and they were making a game and they didn't have time to do the cinematics so um we ended up doing the cinematics for them and we used soft image for that because that's that's just the pipeline they were using. So I had to I had to learn animation inside of uh, XSI, and I I loved it. I loved it. Loved it. Loved it. It was great. Hey, Bian Fishar, how are you, sir? Good to see you. Even in digital form, <laughs> how was your New Year? Probably already know the answer, but if you wanted to 3D print this one, you'd have to go off concept. I would. Yep. I'm I would definitely go off concept. Would it snap with it being thin at the base? Yeah, this neck would definitely snap. This is actually thinner than uh so I worked on Disney Infinity and um we did Mrs. Incredible's neck was this was a, not even this thin and it it just snapped off on the toys for the most part. 
Use Optimize XI for a couple of years in Photo Studio doing compositing for print. Nice. I'm an industrial designer. I remember when Autodesk Sketchbook Pro, I've never used that one. It was the second group of industrial designers out of the degree program at Humber College Canada. Nice. Yeah. Yep. You feel it. <laughs> Long time hobbyist. Started with Bryce and Poser. There you go. I messed around with Bryce quite a bit. Um, yeah, Poser eventually become Daz, and they merged with Viewpoint. So Viewpoint was in uh, Utah. That's where I'm from is Utah. And uh, yeah, they were, da I don't know if Daz, I think Daz bought Poser, or so, I can't remember how that whole thing went down. There used to be, way back in the day, a company called Viewpoint, and they just made models. I don't know if any of you guys can remember Viewpoint. That was here in Utah, and a bunch of my friends worked there that eventually became... Um, I worked with them at different studios in Utah later on. But they eventually became Daz somehow. So And they, they kind of bought their model catalog or so. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, and like Poser merged with Daz somehow. All that stuff. Yeah, Daz, I don't know. They, you know, to, to us in, I don't want to say it, but it was it was a kind of a running joke at the time because it was, uh, it wasn't used for good purposes. <laughs> Bryce was, um, Bryce was a, like a mountain maker, like a lake and mountain, like a landscape maker. It was almost it was almost AI ish in like three D AI ish in a way. You kind of just put in some perimeters and it made mountains for you, <laughs> landscapes. Good times. Okay, for these eyelids, I think I'm just gonna make half spheres. Oh, let's squish them down. What is every every amazing thing seem to happen in Utah? I recently began my character animation program at Anim School. Oh yeah, yeah, I know Dave. So Anim School is I don't know they're they're all over the place. I think I think their address is here in Utah, but I don't know if they're like physically here. They might they might have a I'm sure they have an office here. Yeah, Dave, Dave Gallagher, he was, he was the, f so bat, here's some history for you. I used to belong on this email list called CG Char. And it was like this, this very small group of modelers and animators way back before, like there were forums and that kind of stuff. It was like this, you would send an email and it would send that to everybody. Um, Hey, what's up, McFalls? Um, it would send that email to everybody on the emailing list. So it was kind of this uh, forum, but it was inside of an email. And um, yeah, I'll, most of the people on that list that I knew, they, they like became professionals and worked in the industry. Um, like Bobby Beck was on there from Pixar. Um, and he's, he now runs Animation Mentor with, um, oh, what's his name, Kelly. And yeah, there, a bunch of them were on that list and um, that's how I met most of the people in the industry was from that emailing list. Where am I going with this? Oh, and that's where I met David Gallagher. And he was a big, he was working at Blue Sky Studios and he was a big XSI user at the time. I think he still is. And I think they got, they started Anim School by teaching XSI. Yeah, Animation Mentor is great. I, I sculpted uh, the ogre for their, I helped them with a couple of the models, but the, the ogre is one that I made. Okay. So I'm gonna take this eye and split it off. 
Oops. Uh, I keep wanting to hit group split. And I helped rig some of the creatures um, and retopologize them and stuff and get them, get them ready for animation. Because I'm friends with uh, Kevin Freeman, who rigs all the characters for Animation Mentor. Or did. I'm not sure if he does anymore, but he did at the time. Okay, I'm going to duplicate this off. I did a bunch of characters for Kevin Freeman, too. Clip curve. What is Hotline? I don't know that I heard. I don't know that I've heard of that. Other than like, like <laughs> the, the the call girl Hotline. <laughs> That's what it reminds me of. Ninety nine cents a minute. <laughs> Okay, let's shape these now a little better. Peer to peer serve. Oh, okay, nice. Was that kind of like I IRC before it was IRC? I'm really dating myself. Those old chat rooms. <laughs> oh, you went through Animation Mentor? I like the ogre. Nice. Thanks. IRC. That's a name I haven't heard for a long time. <laughs> That's still around. People still use it. That's pretty fun. I love sculpting with light. So what I mean by that, light and shadow, and that's kind of what sculpting is. Um, but you can see how these eyes are kind of darkish. Well, I'm letting the shadow create that dark rather than actually physically painting it in. And you can see this lip, how the, the light is rolling around this lip. It's too thick and wide where this is tight and small. So what I want to do is take my pinch brush and, and kind of roll it around the edge to make it sharper, thinner. I could also do that with the detail brush. So the difference between the detail brush and the pinch brush, the detail brush will actually displace the geometry either in or out without gathering it together. And the pinch brush will just gather it together. Either It'll either peek it out or push it in with when it gathers the... Uh, the geometry. So let's see here. Yeah, that's really sharp. I might do, I hardly ever use the standard brush. That's why it's not even on my user interface. But sometimes I like to just run it along an edge. Twitch chat still supports IRC clients. Oh, really? I didn't know that. Love both his brushes. Perfect for hair. Yep, it is. Okay. So B S T. Yep, that's standard. B S T. Can't believe I still remember that. Uh, why is that not working? Gotta make sure I'm on the right. Okay, why is my is getting doubled up here. I gotta hide these and delete them. But I don't want to delete the nose. What in the world is going on? Okay, I gotta put this into its own polygroup first, then delete these eyeballs. Okay, now we're back in business. It's 2 a.m. in my country watching your live even though I can't went to sleep. <laughs> well, well, I think thanks for joining me. So late. When you're creating a stylized character, do you use brush balloons sometimes? Not really. Um, they don't give me the control that I want. I like them. They're, they're, they're a fun little toy, but 
Yeah, I typically don't uh, use them, but I know some people that do and they like them. Uh, back in the day, it's how you met people. I met Bobby Chu way back when he used to go to Subway sketching on Sundays. Nice, and sell his art books. Awesome. How times have changed, huh? <laughs> yes. I just saw Bobby at Lightbox. I just said hello. Didn't get the chance to really talk to him. Okay. What is going on? I think I broke my standard brush. I was doing some other things. Uh, oh, see, I didn't turn off. Uh, or I, I must have turned off add or subtract before. There it goes. Okay. There we go. That's what I wanted. That feels better. Softer lippage. Let me turn on, whoops. Let me turn on Sculptress Pro just so I can build it up. I hope you saw the gif I made about the three character workshop I am in bro is that the is that the the appendage brush is that the one you're talking about <laughs> yeah it was funny I feel like Shane turns into Bob's from Bob's Burgers when he's talking with his tools <laughs> I like Bob's Burgers. It's pretty funny. Build it up, smooth it out. Okay, get him straight. It's like swinging down here. Get back here, you. All right, let's get some ears on there. And we can pull his neck down a bit. And then his hair is gonna be a lot. His hat and his hair is gonna, gonna kinda help, help out a lot. Just wanna tune this, I don't know what happened to this lower eyelid. Down a little bit. Have any of you guys been playing uh, any games over the break? Anything new? I've still been messing around with Diablo 4 just because I can open it, do some stuff really quick, and close it and not spend too much time with it, you know? <laughs> Doesn't lock me down for hours. I'm not a fan of how this lip is kind of curling over. See if I can pull it out. Call of Duty. You know, I never got into Call of Duty. My 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 kids played it. They love it, but I never got into it. I used to play uh, Counter Strike a lot back in the day, and I think that's the closest to Call of Duty that I've ever played. Oh, going to get it. Elden Ring? I, I did finish Elden Ring. I love Elden Ring. It's, it's a great, great game. It's funny because I got into Souls games backwards because the original Demon Souls kind of ruined me. I just, I couldn't figure out what it, how it wanted me to play it. And it was, it, it was just so brutal. It kept beating me down and I didn't understand it. And so I, I sold it. I'm like, get this book out of here. <laughs> this book, this game, get this game out of here. I don't want to see it anymore. <laughs> so I sold it to somebody. Anyway, and then I tried Dark Souls, Dark Souls 2, Dark Souls 3, and I still, I couldn't get into any of them. 
just because again I didn't understand how it worked because I was like a run and gunner not a slow methodical trying to figure out the the tells of the the bosses and stuff you know and until I played Sekiro so I actually played Bloodborne a little bit too and I was I, I really liked the aesthetic of it but it wasn't until Sekiro when I finally understood because Sekiro was kind of half and half it's kind of half fast and half slow so you could kind of run and gun like I was used to but then you had to like slow down for the bosses and really like take your time and and figure out their their move set and then I then I got it I'm like oh okay this is this is how it works and um and then Elden Ring was also it was so open world that you could like you can cheese a lot you know <laughs> and so I had fun cheesing stuff and then um and then I played Dark Souls 3 again, and I absolutely loved it. Yeah, Elden Ring, I played. I got all the way through that. It was a lot of fun. I play as a... <laughs> it's really funny, because one of my best friends, Alan Tu, he's the lead designer of um, Hogwarts Legacy, and um, he talks about how he loves to play as a dagger, like using a dagger, like the tiniest little thing. In Elden Ring, da the dagger has a... Sorry if I'm losing a lot of you guys, by the way, talking about games. Um, anyway, the dagger has this thing called Quick Step. And it's like a dodge, but it's faster than a dodge. It uses your magic power, but you can, like, sidestep everything. Yeah, Hogwarts, it's so great. So great. That's my old studio, by the way. They Avalanche Studios. That's where I used to when I worked for Disney. They were Avalanche was owned by Disney, and then they sold it to Warner Brothers, and then they made Hogwarts Legacy. So it's the same studio. This little pencil neck. <laughs> it's really funny. Anyway, I, I have some friends that really like to use like the, the, the big, the huge weapons that are slow and they hit really hard and do a lot of damage. And me, I have to, I'm like a sewing machine. I have to hit them a hundred times. <laughs> but that sidestep to get out of the way and plan your moves, it's really fun. It's really fun. I like it a lot. Okay, let's, let's figure out this hat really slow it's only been 45 minutes i mean i've gotten i've gotten quite a ways but not not as far as i would like to why did that head disappear when i drew this in oh shite i should have saved it all right well here we go okay please save it <laughs> all right let's try this again doesn't happen too often with me I've been lucky oh blinding light not responding oh there it goes okay Uh, na, 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 40. This one. Sweet. Not too bad. Not too far off. Hey, Libra. How are you doing? Well, Happy New Year to you as well. well thank you. Okay. I've had ZBrush open too long. That's what happens. <laughs> okay, let's uh, let's try drawing the hat now. I better save this first. Okay, 
crying kid. We're going to load in the texture again. So weird it had little black areas. There we go. Shrink the opacity and park it back in the corner. Okay, back at it. Thanks for your patience, everybody. Get back to talking about Dark Souls. I kind of think feel like I'm talking to myself. Do you guys play Dark Souls games? <laughs> Is that a thing? Get that hat in there like I wanted to. Beat one, three in Elden Ring. Ah. Nice. Why? Why, why, why? Okay. Well, we're going to be fixing this. Got the Demon Souls remake, and I need to finish. Oh, I, I did, I did, I've not gone back to try Demon Souls. I'll admit that it, it, it scarred me too much. <laughs> ZBrush usually crashes suddenly without any messages for me. It's interesting. So, yeah, ZBrush twenty twenty two is the most stable for me, and so, and that's where all my character creator uh, plugins are. So, I typically use that version. But I think what's going on is something is up with my uh, Sculptress Pro on this one. So I'm just going to Z remesh it. It's going to get rid of the color, but that's okay. I'll duplicate this. Okay. And then we're going to Z remesh it. Um, and we could, well, yeah, let's just see how good of a job it does. Let's go target polys 5,000 maybe. Let's see. I guess something did something happen with Sculptor's Pro in 2024 last night? Yeah. Oh, there it goes. Yep. Something is up. We're going to work through it. So in, if you ever run into this error, this is kind of how you fix it. So usually what, what causes a crash is non, what is it called? It's like when, when the faces are twisted upon themselves. Non-manifold geometry. That's what I was looking for. Okay, let's do it again. Look at all these. <laughs> it's making all these save files. Okay. Non-manifold, yep, that. And I, I'm sure that's that's happening somewhere in here. So, okay. And I wonder if I just do this polygon size, if this will break it. We'll see. Okay. Because this will rebuild the entire mesh if I do this. The mesh is partially hidden. Oh, these guys are still around? What the heck? Get out of here, you. Okay, do this again. There it goes. Okay, okay. That's good. Okay, I think we're good. I'm going to save this. It's not Twisted Geo's geometry that can't exist. Yeah, that's... It's, it's like, yeah, it's like, it, it's hard to explain in, wor in words. It's better, it's easier to just draw it and show you, but yeah. Okay. 
exchange bear. Oh, was that you, Joe By Yes, it was. <laughs> Do you guys want to see something funny? So, I've been um, I've been working with an old friend of mine back from I used to work at a claim back in the day, and uh, they're they're working on a new a new game that is like um, what am I trying to say? That it uses caricatures and like a lot of caricatures and it's the characters are like celebrities like uh politicians singers actors all sorts of stuff so this is character creator and i'll open up the my latest biden to show you <laughs> yeah you guys saw it <laughs> so uh character creator and zbrush go kind of hand in hand they work really, really well with each other. And this is my, this is my Biden. Look at, it's got animation on it. <laughs> yeah. uh. So I, I made, I made his face in, uh, in ZBrush. And then I pushed him over to character creator and I gave him clothes and, and, and his, uh, his hair and stuff. Yeah. Thanks man. Appreciate it. it means a lot coming from you. <laughs> so anyway yeah he's a lot of fun and you can put different motions on him these are just canned motions uh set the dance turn i'm trying to remember yeah like <laughs> it's got these lights in here it's kind of <laughs> yeah it's really funny but i i'm, I'm just glad you could tell who it was <laughs> that makes me happy I'm on a list now. <laughs> yeah. I've done it. Come into my house. Uh, sir, you can't do that. I have to take you out. Okay, so it looks like uh it looks like this rebuild worked. The partial tiny thumbnail you <laughs> tell awesome. That's great. That's how you know that it's a good caricature, right? Okay, I'm gonna save this again. Okay, just making sure I still got everything. Okay, now I want to Z remesh this. I think it should work and not crash because I, I essentially rebuilt the mesh. So it should have taken care of any non manifold geometry that was giving me grief. And, um, and it plus it had those weird eyes that were still hidden. Um, so I deleted those and between doing those two things, I think it should work if I Z remesh it. I don't know if I necessarily need to Z remesh it right now, but I could, and I'm going to actually split this nose off, split hidden. And so it's just this piece. Okay. And I don't know what's going to happen with this little thing and this little neck in the Z remesh, but we're going to try it. Let's duplicate it first. Oh, it's already duplicated. Okay. I'm going to delete this one. Because I want to duplicate the fixed mesh, not the broken one. Okay. So this is duplicated. We're all good. I'm going to save it one more time. When I'm doing stuff like this, I save it over and over and over again. Just so I can make sure I'm going forward, not moving back. So, okay. Um, now that we have this. We can do a Z remesh. Z remesh. There's no groups to keep. And 5,000. Okay. Hopefully it'll just do it and not crash. Fingers crossed. Yeah, they have a whole list of celebrities and the character, the, the concept artist that's doing the caricatures is really, really good. So they look nice. See this? Now it's nice and clean. We did lose our poly paint, and that's okay. But now we can easily clean this up and get rid of all the warbles. Um, we can leave Sculptus Pro turned off. And just kind of just clean up this stuff. Let's turn down the power on our smooth brush. Yeah, that's that's an easy way to clean up warbles. Z 
Z remesher is your friend when it comes to that. <laughs> Thanks, Zofo. It was pretty fun. I, you know what? I'll be honest with you. I struggled hard with that one. See, I tell my students that doing caricatures or finding a likeness is like, uh, like cracking a safe, right? Everybody has like a, a code to their face and you have to kind of figure it out like a puzzle. And um, I, I was having the hardest time trying to figure that out. And, but once it clicks, then you're like, ah. Yeah, I was, <laughs> Tutar, I was thinking about you when I said, yep, yeah, cleaning up the warbles. <laughs> okay, so let's unsolo this and I'm gonna project the original onto this one just to get some of the color back. Um, yes. So I don't wanna project the, I only wanna project the color and you can do that. So if you guys are interested in getting my user interface and it comes with this custom menu and th these are, this is just basically the tool menu broken down into most of the things that I use. And so I'm not like going down in this menu, digging deep down into all this stuff all the time. I just basically simplified this menu into this short menu. And if you want that, I give it away for free over on my website. It's called 3D Character Workshop. And I give you these brushes as well as my user interface. So a lot of people ask, like, cause it just says grab my free brushes, but those brushes also come with my ruler file this user interface and everything like that. So if you've watched the character creator video that I put out and you saw my ruler, people are wondering where to get that ruler from. It's, it's, it's comes with the brushes as well. Have a lot of fun with the VP caricature thinking about doing another one. Awesome. Yeah, you should. There's so much fun to finish my pretty sculpt. If see if I'm happy with the likeness, since it's been a few weeks, yeah. It's a great feeling when you feel like you've you're on point. Yeah, when you when you crack the code, right? You're just like, oh, there it is. <laughs> I always I always uh use uh, the movie Hook as a reference. Um, you know, in Hook when there's like a little kid and uh Robin Williams uh Peter character lands in the Lost Boys, you know, and this little kid walks up to him and he's, he's like, What are you doing here, you adult? You're not Peter Pan, you know? And he like, all the kids are mad that he's there and he's trying to tell them that he's Peter Pan. And this one kid goes up to him and like pulls his face tight. And he's like, there you are, Peter. And I feel like that whenever I kind of crack the code on someone's face with caricature, I'm just like, oh, there you are, Biden or whoever it is. Okay, so, and it's, it's like a million subtle moves to get there too. So un anyway, underneath project all here in the menu, you can project color or geometry or both. But here I just want to, I want to project color. So I'm going to hit project all. Would you like to project it? Yes, I would. Thank you very much. And then we can hide the original. And this is our now nice smooth face. It looks like it missed some spots. That's okay because now we can just, it just, since I smoothed it out, it missed the envelope to project that color. We can just color it back in now. It's a little more uh, polygonal around these these edges because we don't have enough geometry to support that color. But that's fine. Let's unhide everything now. The tongue, the teeth. Okay, now we're back in action. We can delete the the other one that's the problem. And then we can save it. Moving forward. Okay, we're good, we're good. Been using a custom menu and interface for so long, I don't know if I can actually use bare bones ZBrush anymore. Yeah, I've heard that from a lot of people. <laughs> um, it, it's funny because the way I designed this interface was based off of their uh, starter user interface, their base one. So I have all the same stuff like up, up here. I've changed a few things. Um, I put the informational stuff over here, the stuff I don't access very much. I'm right-handed. 
I, I've been meaning to make a left-handed one, but I'm right-handed, so all of the stuff I access the most is over here on the right and across the bottom of the screen, and the stuff that I access the least is across the top and down the left-hand side, so, um, because, you know, right-handed. Um, but uh, are, are you left-handed? Is anybody left-handed that uses my user interface? I was just wondering if, if they could benefit from that or not. Okay. Let's try this again and see if we can not get a crash. You need the concept back. Oh, thank you. Okay. I'm just going. I've altered UI, yep, and left. Okay, interesting. Yeah, I would essentially just take what's on the left, put it on the right, take what's on the right, put it on the left, and be done with it. If if I was uh, left-handed. Yeah, that's what, I, that's what I was thinking about. So split, hidden, unmasked points, not hidden. And let's bring the texture back up. Okay. <laughs> Don't know where this black came from behind him. Like when I was in Photoshop. Make that disappear you can you can make your back if you if it's not a gradient background you can make it disappear by clicking on this paint right here in the on the wheel and then holding down control plus alt and click dragging in the background and you can make it go away make that opacity up there we go okay i'm used to the layout by now to change it oh i bet <laughs> weirdly i have a wide screen and often sit on the right. Everything is essentially the same. Just added a few more buttons. Oh yeah, cool. You can also easily make your own custom menus and stick it on another key, hotkey. Um, I have a YouTube video that shows you how to make custom menus. I think Michael Pavlovich has one too. But a, a really good way to learn a program is if it's if it's available to customize the user interface it's it's good practice to see to you know make your own user interface based off of what you use the most and stuff and it kind of forces you to dig through their menus and see what's available and oftentimes you'll you'll be like oh i didn't know that was there i didn't know that existed what does this do that kind of stuff you know is there a way to get a brush out of Lightbox to add to my custom pop-up brush palette? Yes. Um, so the trick to that is you cannot get a brush out of here. Okay, this is its own interface. But what you can do is go to brush right here, and then this is where you need to pull them out of right here. And if you need to uh, load one, you can click here. Sorry, that was a, I clicked the wrong type. I think you actually click down here when you're in uh, custom user interface mode, and then you can load that brush into the brush menu. It's kind of this backwards way of doing it, but you have to pull it out of here to put it on your custom user interface, if that makes sense. If you're in custom user interface mode, you can pull it out of here, but you, as you'll notice, not all the brushes are here. So what you kind of have to do is really weird and, and backwards, but you can drag one of these brushes down to your user interface, and then click on it and switch it for a different brush out of that big brush menu and put it down there. And then it'll be loaded up in this menu and you can drag it out of there. So, but you basically, you, you just know that you can't drag it out of here, right? This, you can't get it from this menu. You have to go out of the brush menu. That's the biggest, that's the biggest trick. Okay, hope that helps. <laughs> Uh, is it one that does not load on default that you have to go into the light box? Oh, yeah, are you looking for a brush that like is in the brush menu or something? The one I want is in the light box. Oh, um, so yeah, that that's that's a little different thing. Um, 
you're talking about this brush menu here. Like, uh, like say you want Smooth Stronger, right? So you can load Smooth Stronger here. Like say load this one. And now it will be here, right? Smooth Stronger is right there. And now you can grab this one and drag it out into your custom menu. And are you saying it won't pop up the next time you open ZBrush? Um, so what you can do is you can click on this brush and save it out of here, like save a duplicate, duplicate of it. And save that duplicate in your brush startup menu and then reference that one rather than the one that's in Lightbox. Does that make sense? That's what I would do. I wouldn't, I wouldn't reference the one in Lightbox. I would reference a duplicate of it, a copy of it. And then it should work for you. I actually used to have Smooth Stronger in my list of things, but I kept running into that problem over and over again. It just wouldn't load. Even if, yeah, so anyway, I ended up just getting rid of it because I don't use it enough. Okay, what am I doing here? Uh, bill. So I'm gonna make this bill a different way than I normally do. I'm gonna use a cylinder. I like to show you guys all sorts of different ways of making things in ZBrush instead of just the same way over and over and over. Um, we're gonna split this off. And I'm gonna use this as as the the, the bill. Okay, um, let's grab select lasso. And I'm gonna hide everything that's not that, delete it. So now we have this piece here. And I want to do uh, subdivide it one time just to get more geometry. That's a little too light for me. So I hit control D to subdivide it and then I want to get rid of the lower and now I now it's this dense. Yeah, no problem. Okay, now what we can do is we can add a thickness through the dynamic subdivision. We're just going to crank the thickness and that way we can see it from the side when we're looking at it from the side. But I'm going to turn off uh, post subdiv so it gives us a rounder edge across here and we're going to do a Uncrease all. Let's go a little bit thicker. Okay, there we go. So now we just got to bend this and make it work. So just go ahead and bring this in here like this. And stretch it on out. Okay, there's a couple different ways we can bend this. But I think what I want to do, to make this really sharp up here up front, kind of go all the way back to the hat right there and be, I don't want it to curve in, I just want it to go straight into the hat like that. And we need to bend it in two different ways. So I'm gonna save it again okay let's let's look at our options here in the uh, in the bend editor I'm gonna put this gizmo down at the end here because I'm gonna bend it in two ways let's see if we can do it um, I think I want to go deformer soft let's try this Okay, so basically this is FFD in Maya. If you've ever used an FFD, it's it, FFD stands for Freeform Deform Modifier. <laughs> Freeform Deform, FFD. Um, okay, so with this, you get these little cones and you can change the cones based on what you need. If you hover over this cone, let me hit uh, solo so we can see it better. If you hover over the cone, it tells you what it does. So this is a, D, a Z subdivide. I'm gonna take it down to two. So it gets rid of that middle like area there, that middle, middle cut. I don't, I don't need that like three on, along the edge. I only need it to be a box. But now what I can do is, and I don't know if it will work across mirroring or not, but I'm gonna mask off these center dots and then push the sides down. It looks like it is working. Okay, so I'm gonna push those sides down to create that bend. 
And I can invert the mask and pull this up so it's really bent. Nice, nice bend, but I need to bend it this direction too. So clear the, the mask off of there and let's do a mask lasso. I'm gonna mask off these and then pull this up like this. Clear the mask, invert mask these, pull them down so it's really kind of bending up like this. And I feel like this might be bending a little too much. That feels pretty good. Say okay. And there we have our bent hat in two directions. Yay. Okay, another secret thing you can do is um, let's clear the mask on everything. And I think we can just move this whole thing. Maybe not. I guess not. Anyway, um, I just I just wanted to move move all everything all at once, but I don't think it wants to let me. There it goes. Okay, I just wanted to raise it up a little bit, rotate it so it like is is going into the hat right down here. There we go. And the the hair is going to come out of the front of the hat, covering this this extra bit. But the secret here is you don't have to hit accept on this so typically what you would do is go to this gear and you would hit accept and then what that would do is that would make your freeform to form modifier go away and then you could no longer edit it but if you ever wanted to go back and edit it there's a secret you just leave it alone you don't ever accept it you just go back to working on something else and now um, if you ever want to go back and work on that piece again with the um, actual cage you just turn on your gizmo and see how this gear is still orange. That means it's still active. So you just click into the gear and go to your deformer right here, deform soft, and then it'll come back and it'll be in the same location that you left it and you can continue editing it, which is super, co super cool. So that's how you can work non-destructively with uh, modifiers. Now I wish you could stack modifiers, but you can't. It's like one modifier per object okay so now that we have that let's get that uh, let's get that hair this big piece of hair going using our, our friendly uh, <laughs> I need to change the color of this hat though it's like the same color as the inside of his mouth I, I like the color but <laughs> let's make it uh, what do you think I'll let you guys decide what color. Like, I'm thinking like an orange, red. Um, what color hat should he have? What are you thinking? I'll let you guys decide while I make, while I put some hair in there. <laughs> Timmy Turner pink. I don't know what Timmy Turner pink is. Snap this looks like a unicorn horn. I'm gonna give him uh I think I'm gonna give him blonde hair. Let's let's split and unmask points. Kind of a dusty blonde. Stacking modifiers would be awesome. So many times I've needed to do multiple operations. Yeah, exactly. Yep, Ben there. Okay. So just want to shape this more like a like hair. I really need to try um, Renault's uh, new hairbrush. So Renault is a his name's Renault Galan. If if you you can look up Neil, could you post a link to his hairbrush in here? Would you mind? Um. Anyway, he's uh he's a friend of mine that used to work on on Overwatch. He was the lead character artist on Overwatch, and he's recently released a um a hairbrush it's funny to say hairbrush but he's released a new brush to help you make hair and it's based off curves and it's really really nice okay but for this one i think what i'm going to do is 
I'll start it kind of like this. Let's color. Yeah, maybe a blue hat. That's what I was thinking. A little more saturated. Okay, there we go. Un yellow unicorn. And I'm going to try something before I bend it all into shape. Yeah, I've seen Tur Timmy Turner. Fairly apparent. <laughs> but I can't recall... Okay, let's see. Is that Timmy? Oh, there you go. This pink right here. <laughs> okay. I could do that. Okay, I'm gonna do Accu Curve on the end of this just to get it sharper. And I just kind of gave it some some edges, and maybe one down the middle here. Just using the pinch brush. I'm just gonna smooth the sides and the bottom down. Maybe on the bottom. Where's the bottom? I'm lost. What's going on? <laughs> okay. I got to get myself orient oriented again. Like that. Okay. The solo. I just wanted to clip curve the bottom off. Remember, a clip curve is like a smash brush. It just takes the geometry and like pushes it up. It, it's not cutting anything. It's just pushing, smashing. Kind of smoothing that out. And then I want to kind of make it thicker overall. Okay, I think that'll work. So now we're going to do a bend curve. Well, let me see what the geometry looks like. I want more geometry down the length of this, so I'm going to Z remesh it. See how the see how the polygons are stretched like a rectangle? I want them more square. I'm going to turn off dynamic for a second. Go to Z remesher. Let's do a 2000. That's probably way more than we need. Okay. That's probably too much. Let's do let's do a 1. That's better. It's very similar, but let's run one more smooth across there. Let's bend that puppy. Okay. Bend curve modifier. And then we have these orange dots and we can increase the resolution. Let's increase it like by five. So we have five dots now. And then we can just kind of mush this into space. The position. Okay, now when you click on these, you'll get these little cones. And they do different things. So this is a twist. And so if I want to twist it back into shape, I can, so I can twist it so it kind of aims down the length of this thing. And you can also grab these cones, see how it says scale? I can pinch it down so it's tighter, so it's a sharper thing. How'd you get the, the move to move like that? Is there a name for it? Um, yeah, it's just called the bend, bend modifier. It's underneath the gizmo menu, under the gear right here. So bend curve right there, bend curve modifier. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. Okay. Oh, dang it. I reset it. I accidentally clicked bend curve again and it stuck another one on there. And then 
like wanted to reset it. Okay. Poof. Let me see. I can have it go this way, just so not not twisting on itself. And see how I got this going on down here. So you can do uh, different things. This is like a squash and stretch. Don't really use that one much. This is an overall, overall scale. I use that one sometimes. Um, but sometimes you'll just get this, this pinching down on the inside of the curve or like right here. And you can add more resolution to kind of unkink that, but at the same time, I think I like what it's doing right now, so I think I'll just uh, accept it, and then I can come back in and, and modify this a little more. I'm gonna twist this somewhat. Maybe like that. I'm just looking at this front leading edge, seeing how it kind of flows through that, that hair shape like this one does. And then, uh, but I, I, you can only go so far with bend curve sometimes. So you do have to accept it. So just go accept and then we can come back in and, and smooth things out, clean it up. Relax it a little bit. So those caricatures, that, that character I was showing you, I'm, um, the goal for 2024 is to live stream on my channel and show you how I create those characters. So you can subscribe here to Maxon to catch me on Mondays. Um, and you can also catch other streamers. There's a whole bunch of live streamers that stream on this channel. Um, but if you want to uh, watch me do, make those characters, you can follow me over at 3dcharacterworkshop.com's YouTube channel. And I also teach a course. It's called 3D Character Workshop. You can kind of see a running theme here. <laughs> and it's a course that I've been teaching for, I think I'm going on six years, five or six years now. And I also have an acceleration program, which is essentially a mentoring, mentorship, coaching calls. So if you're interested in that, you can send me an email to shane.olson at 3dcharacterworkshop.com. Or you can go to 3dcharacterworkshop.com and click on the contact link, and that will go straight to me as well. Okay, let's make that. How much is what, the course or the acceleration program? The acceleration program is not cheap because it's live coaching calls and feedback with me. Um, I don't like to say the price here in case it changes. It's This is being recorded and if somebody hears the price and yeah. It's, so what I like to say is um, you can either choose to go to uh, like an art school and pay, get a student loan and pay a ton of money or get coaching from someone like me or another, there's a lot of mentors out there, but um, I just get feedback and I'll talk to you about how to build your portfolio because you don't really need to do student loans to get into the industry. You just need to learn what you need to learn and get a good portfolio and get a job. Some of my mentor students are in here, I think. We also, I also bring in uh, uh, industry pros. That's another big thing for 2024. I'm trying to bring in an industry pro once a month for my mentorship group. Uh, yeah, you do need to be at a certain level. So, um, I need to, I, I need, I, I vet the people that go into my mentorship. So if you want to know if you're a good candidate, again, just feel free to reach out. I'd be happy to tell you more about it.
Okay. <laughs> nice. It's fun. You know it's working when it makes you laugh. Yeah, Ian's one of my students in there. Pull this out and down. Turn off. I guess I had a hacky curve on, which is okay. <laughs> hey, Dr Jerome, are you watching me right now? <laughs> I need to, I need to message him back. Purple blue for the hat. Hey, what's up, Jerome? <laughs> I will message you as soon as this stream is over. If that's okay. Yeah, let's get it set up. Those drum, drums, one of the industry pros that we're going to have speak with us. I'm super, I, I get just as excited for, <laughs> for myself as the students. So drum is a, a sculptor at Pixar. I, sh I, I always want to call you like the, the sculptor. <laughs> is there any project they've done that you haven't worked on drum? I know there are other sculptors there too, but I'm just fascinated by your, your history. So now's a good time to join if you want to if you want to join us lots <laughs> yeah one or two one or two characters <laughs> are you saying there there are lots of uh projects that you haven't you haven't worked on they've done i can see that being the case Oh, come on. What's going on? Why is there not? Is it too low? Probably is too low. Jerome, were you around when I showed my Biden? I'd, I'd like to see what you thought about that. Yeah, it's, I can see that. Plus they go years and years and years, right? Like one project can go five, seven, ten years. You like it? <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. I can't wait to scope some of the other ones. Okay. Three to five years? Okay. Yeah, it's, that's that's the part that a lot of people don't realize. Like, it takes a small army several, year, several years to make a film. And then it just comes, it's so crazy, because then it just comes out, you know, over the weekend. Yeah, I think, hey, Neil, would you mind grabbing a link to that video? There's, well, we, we can't post post uh, links on YouTube, but um, Jerome has a, there's a video of him sculpting Lightning McQueen. Jerome typically works in actual clay, like real, real clay. And has recently gotten into digital. How's that going, by the way? Voice of Gamma and Up. I think 
He also did the voice of. Uh, he did. He did get nice. That's awesome. <laughs> I love that stuff. I've done a couple a little little voices here and there for video games, but nothing like that. That's great. And Wheezy, like the is that the name of that penguin, the dusty penguin from Toy Story? Did you voice that guy? Let's see. I gotta get his ears. He's missing his ears and they're driving me crazy. Let's get his ears in there. Oh, I lost my I lost my hair color because I uh I Z remeshed it. So whenever you Z remesh it, it wipes your color. But while we're doing color, let's do the hat. Oh, your brother did that voice. Oh, okay. And he did uh, Heimlich too, right? That was the funniest voice ever. I remember him saying that <laughs> he storyboarded Bug's Life and nobody else could do the voice. Because <laughs> he did it so well. But like, how about you just do the voice? <laughs> Oh, is that a different? Okay, never mind. I'm a beautiful butterfly. <laughs> oh, there you go. So if you're on t here, let me see if I can post it on YouTube. Hope you don't mind, Jerome. Yay. Yay. There he is. <laughs> all right but wait till my wait till my stream's done <laughs> i'm just teasing did that did that work something went wrong why did something go wrong with my chat come on chat Come back. I tried to post and then it kicked it kicked it and said no. You you can't do that. Why not? Am I still streaming? You guys still there? Worked on YouTube. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, my I give away my user interface for free over on my website, 3dcharacterworkshop.com. So it says free brushes, but it's also my user interface and my ruler file. All of it is is within that link. There's a link to it. Yeah, my pleasure. Okay, what am I doing here? Um, ears now I gotta do mirroring mirror what the heck okay had a hiccup there for a minute drum I saw that they were hiring a, a sous chef <laughs> on LinkedIn. I can't help but think of Ratatouille. That's when I visited Pixar, um, when I went to see Michael Comet, they had a, like a little, uh, like a, a full French, like cafe thing set up in the animator pit. Like a little bistro, like full on when they were working on Ratatouille. It was great. Yeah, I just I did I did save it. Thanks, Neil. Okay. You got banned from there. What are you what are you doing over on LinkedIn to get banned, man? <laughs> um, I I don't know. I would there's lots and lots and lots of places to look for uh character artist jobs. You got ArtStation, Glassdoor. There's a whole bunch. Not just LinkedIn. LinkedIn's not the only the only cat in town, you know? 
I mean, it is a good place to look for jobs, but it's not the only place. I think, does 80 level do job listings? I'm trying to remember. Okay, so I need um, more geometry in this ear. So I'm going to apply the subdivisions and delete the lower. Now we have this much geometry. Kind of push it in and make that double, double helix. I'm still running out of geometry. So let's Sculptors Pro it, shall we? Um, yeah, that gives us a good, good geometry. Maybe a little bit more dense. Oof, that's too much. Too much. Back it off. That's good. Hey there, welcome to the stream. Okay. You'll notice too that I don't use a lot of fancy brushes. My favorite brush is the move brush. I kind of use it like I would use it my thumb with real clay. You just kind of push it around. And you also might notice I, I use little dabs when I use the move brush. I don't click, hold, and drag like this because then you'll get warbles. I just do tap, tap, tap. Tap it in. Moving smooth, moving smooth. Okay. Here's. Let's go get that blonde going on. When you're talking about vetting people for mentorships, is there anything you like to see? Um, I just like to see that your that your skill level is up to where I can help you. If you're just starting out, um, I don't want you to waste your money, you know, because it'll it'll take you too long to get up to where you need to be. I'm I'm specifically looking for people that already have the skills to get into the industry. They're right on the brink of breaking in, and I I'm I want to help you break into the industry. That's that's my ideal uh, student for that specific thing. But brand new beginners, yeah, you're better off like just going through the course and getting better. Getting your skills up to that level. So I'm I'm happy to look at your portfolio where it is now and um give you some feedback on it. That goes for anyone if you want to send me um if you're interested in the mentorship. Send me your portfolio through my contact page, contact link on my 3D character workshop page. I'd look at all those emails. Sometimes I get busy and it takes me a little bit to get back, but I will get back to you. Unless it goes to my spam. Oops. That's not the yellow I wanted. What type of personality work ethic do you like? Like I don't I don't know what you're what you what you're talking about. Fill object. The the personality and work ethic is the, the second half of your skills, actually. Basically don't be a jerk. Yeah, Justin, your skill level's up. You're getting there. Okay, let's see. Maybe a little 
more saturated than that. Yeah, that's pretty fun. Okay, let's start to block in the rest of his hair. See how far we can get in the next 15 minutes. Oh, you like the like red hair? <laughs> yeah. Off Sculptress Pro. I might give him red hair. That be that could be funny. Fun. Okay. Let's see. Split this off. And this is another way to bend things. You don't have to do the bend multi modifier. You can just use a move brush, just kind of push it around. Before any of the, the fancy hair brushes or anything like that, I would just start with a sphere and push it around. <laughs> or a tube. Start with a tube and push it around. I mean, that's essentially what you do with real clay, right? Just kind of roll it out, shape it, and stick it on there. A lot of people ask me, like, what, what brushes I use. Like, there's some kind of magic brush that's, that's the thing. And, and certain brushes can help greatly in certain situations, but for the most part, it's more about the volumes and the forms and all that stuff than it is the magic brush. Happy New Year from Italy. Some question, your method of building a figure could be applied to realistic figures with a lot of anatomy. It, yeah, absolutely. Yep. Because for, form is form, whether it's stylized or realistic, doesn't matter. In fact, if you look at the books that are called uh, Anatomy for Sculptors, you'll notice that a lot of their examples are broken down into uh, simplified objects. Same. Move this down here. There's a big space. <laughs> yeah, it's the sculpt brush. Boom, Biden. I got some monster clay last week. Oh, nice. Um, there's, I like this clay called uh, Sculpey, like Super Sculpey Extra Firm. It's like a light, like a medium gray color. It's kind of fun to play around with. Drum, are you still here? Like, I'm just curious what clay, what's your favorite? I think it's Chavant, right? It's, it has kind of a brownish tone to it. Like a like kind of the color of the inside of this guy's mouth. How would you like a portfolio with different styles of projects? Um, I would I would specialize more than having everything in your portfolio. If you have everything, you're kind of a master of nothing. So you want to kind of like say, hey, I'm I'm a sculptor that does stylized characters and kind of specialize that way. Um, you can have a more um, robust portfolio if you're wanting to work at, a, at an indie studio, like independent studio with where one person has to do a lot of different things. Um, those kinds of portfolios appeal to those types of studios. 
but if you want to work in a in a larger studio you should be more specialized Chavant cm50 nice thanks does that does that have a lot of odor to it and does it matter do you have to have it a well ventilated area for that Yeah. Okay. Is it like sulfur? You think I should make multiple portfolios with different focuses? You could. Um or what I would suggest is like on ArtStation, if you're going to put your port I recommend ArtStation for your portfolio but just cuz everybody knows it and it's easy. Um you can put your th your different skills into different folders. So like I have a folder that's personal work and I have a folder that's professional work, but you could also, um, you could you can split it into different types of things. That's a sulfur based clay, okay. Uh, this is ZBrush, Mr. Salty Malty. I like that name. NSP is sulfur free and go right into silicone molding when done. Okay, I gotta get this little bit that goes underneath his ear right here. This is, a, this is kind of a tricky bit right here because you have this one hair coming out from underneath the hat swinging and it goes behind his ear and there's this little piece right here, this little triangle kind of a um, like a sideburn bit and, and you, you don't, this is too naked right here. I, I feel like it needs to be forward. I might have to move his hat up because this hairline is not good. It feels like he's balding or something so i gotta i gotta figure it out uh which 3d printing software so what was specifically are you like what kind of to to do the sculpting i would use something like zbrush but for some for the the slicing i would use something like uh, there's a whole bunch of them there's one called chitu box it's free but my favorite is um what is it called? Lychee. It's called lychee. And that's, um, it's actually made or, or started by a guy who used to work for uh, Pixelogic back in the day, Thomas. Cura is also a popular one. I've, I've not used uh, Kira. Hey, what's up, Morton? Um, I have I used Topo Gun back in the day. I haven't used three. Okay, let me see here. Pull this up and kind of move it a little bit forward. Now, as long as you just move this, oh, it looks like I, I botched it. It's gone now. I don't know why. I did something to break it. Break the, remove the uh, modifier. That's okay. Okay, I'm gonna put all of these in different groups and then mirror and weld them. Yeah, see how he looks he looks bald. I gotta I gotta bring these up. 
that's a that's a tricky puzzle to solve right there. Um, and I I think what's happening is see his where his eye is and the distance between his eye to that hat. I have this huge distance. I need to close that gap up and fix all that. I don't think I'm going to have time to do it during the stream. I'll start by moving this hair up. Maybe like that. And let's adjust this hair. Well, from this angle, if we turn on perspective and we get to like an 85, that's about, that's about the size of the hat. I need to reduce the size of his head. Back here. out because oh, I, I really love how round this is see how it carries your eye all the way through this roundness I don't want to lose that this roundness and this day I had tessimated sub tool with groups and it refused to z remesh it it even worked when I Used easy remesh decimate. It was symmetrical and the gimbal was zero. Huh. Yeah, I kind of ran into an issue similar to that earlier in the stream today. Um and the what I tried to get it to work was um just I just decimated it again. And it 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 kind of went got past the uh the issue it was having. I want to try that again. Need to get some eyebrows in there too to kind of get that working. I think I feel like this needs to come up like to here. I have a question like, what's better to sculpt with, the perspective on or off? Uh, so typically you want to sculpt with perspective off in ZBrush, because, um. A lot of the tools in ZBrush like to work in orthographic view and like the cutting brushes specifically. So um, yeah, you'll typically want to be in orthographic and then just check your model in perspective here and there. Let's see if it's... Sorry, I'm kind of thinking to myself here for a minute. Sometimes I got to be quiet and puzzle stuff out. Yeah, pop perspective is off is better when you're sculpting. Just make sure you check every once in a while. And there's there's also different levels of perspective. Um, there's uh, like in my menu, you can access them easily right here. 
there's like a 35, 50, 85. So these are just different focal lengths. And it'll just skew the model. It's funny because sometimes when I'm streaming, I'm talking and kind of paying attention to chat. And sometimes I don't pay attention enough to the the relationships of things on my sculpt. So after after I'm done streaming, sometimes I'll stay and, and sculpt and try and find where things are messed up when I can actually focus 100% <laughs> instead of split focus, you know? Like... Yeah, these are these are too long and the ears too low and there's a whole bunch of stuff going on. But anyway, I will show you I'll show you guys Biden one more time. Let me save this. Um I'm working on the the wrinkles for his head. Um what's what's cool is with um face tools, if you have the face tools plug in or a uh, character creator, where is it? Yeah, so if you have, uh, I'm, I'm kind of cutting in all these little wrinkles and everything, and you see this face tools plugin, you can click this and you can push, um, you can push this over to ZBrush and it will bring in all of these, uh, all of these morph targets. So if you go over to ZBrush, if I open up, there's two plugins. There's one called Pose Tools, and then there's another one called Face Tools. So this Face Tools, it will bring in, it will load in all these different targets right here. And then you can click through the different targets like smile, raise eyebrows, frown, all sorts of stuff. Um, and it's it's just really nice to be able to go through each one of those and like re-sculpt his face to look how you want it to look. And then you just push it back and then it will access all of those morph targets when you do the animation. And so it's a really nice, fun, sculpty way to do rigging of a face. Anyway, all right, you guys, it's uh, my time is up, but I want to thank you guys for hanging out with me today. I really, really appreciate it. Um, Yeah, that's what I'm using right now. So um, that's so. That's a Reillusion plugin. Those two things are Reillusion plugins. They're they're. I don't know if Face Tools is free, but um, the uh, the ZBrush Pose Tools is free through the Reillusion Hub. So you can go get that there, and basically it helps you um, helps you push characters back and forth really easily. And you can also use it just inside of ZBrush to store your poses. So this is like a pose bank, and I, they Reillusion just barely released a video of me explaining how I use ZBrush with uh, Character Creator. Um, if you want to go check that out. So, anyway, um, yeah. Again, thanks for hanging out with me, guys. I really appreciate it. And um, I, once one more time, if you want to get my free interface, my brushes, and all that, you can head on over to 3D Character Workshop, grab it for free. It says free brushes, but it also includes my ruler and my user interface. So you can check that out. And uh, yeah, happy sculpting, everyone. Have a great week, and we'll catch you all next Monday. All right, take care, everybody. We'll see ya. Bye.